Hey, Cornerstone family, friends, and those who are checking us out online, we're so glad you've joined us today. Uh, this past Sunday, I started a new message series. It's based upon Max Licato's book called Fearless. We talked about why we shouldn't be afraid and that God uh, helps us in all situations. I'd encourage you to go back and please check out either our website or the YouTube channel, our Facebook page, or to Vimeo and, and, and watch that message. It'll help, um, I think, give some advice, but also some counsel for these strange and odd at times. But I, I mentioned as I began my message that there are a lot of different phobias, and, and I, I mentioned a few of them that I thought were kind of intriguing. And I've got a couple more. Now, again, I'm going to apologize in advance for the uh, mispronunciation. I have I have a full certainty that I'm not saying any of these correctly. All right, so here, here's one. This is Arachi Buterophobia. Uh, it's the fear of having peanut butter stick to the roof of your mouth. All right, I don't know if any of you suffer that from that malady. Uh, then there's Omphroalophobia. Uh, it's the fear of navels. Um, don't know again if those are innies or outies. Uh, then there's Kinem Orthophobia. Uh, it's the fear of zombies. Uh, that's real. Um, you should fear zombies because they are real. Uh, then there's nomophobia. That's uh, the fear of losing your cell service. I think there's probably a lot of people under 40 that may suffer from that malady. And then finally, turophobia. It's the fear of cheese. What did cheese ever do to you? Why would you be afraid of it? It's one of the best things that's ever been invented. Anyway, so those are just some phobias that people have. Now, Steve mentioned in his devotion yesterday how Jesus left us with peace. He calmed the waters and he said, peace be still. He said, peace I leave with you so that we wouldn't be afraid. And throughout the Bible, every time that we see God or his messengers interacting with people, there's this concern of fear. In fact, two words are almost always said by angels as they interact with, with humans, and that's these two words, fear not. So the question is, why would angels need to say fear not? Uh, several possible reasons. Number one, it could be that the people are realizing, oh no, God's going to tell me to do something, or he's going to give me a job, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I can do that. Uh, it may be the con concern of being punished, you know, like uh, driving up I-95 I and you see the police car. Even if you're not speeding, what do you do? Yeah, you take your foot off the gas pedal. Uh, or being called to the principal's office. Not be to be commended, but to be condemned in some way. But I think there's a more important and simple reason. I think that they always said fear not because angels are scary. I used to have a Bible when I was a child that every about 50 pages had a little colored picture, two-sided. And every time they showed angels, they were beautiful and serene and peaceful. And all you want to do is like, oh, I want to go hug this angel. I don't think we'd want to do that because angels are warriors. They're fierce and they're scary. And whether it was Hagar or Gideon or Elijah or Mary or Joseph or the shepherds, every single time the angel said, whoa, 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 don't fear. We're not here to punish you. We're not here to hurt you. We're here to give you some good news. Fear not. It's great news. It's, it's, it's from God. He doesn't want us to fear him. Instead, he wants us to love him. Now, I know that some of you are automatically thinking, now, wait a minute, doesn't the Bible say that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? And, of course, you would be correct. That's from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. But the fear that's mentioned there in Proverbs 1, 7 and other places is not a sense of being scared of or fearing because he's going to punish us. It's more of a sense of awe. It's a sense of wonder. And that's something that we should have. Psalm chapter 34, verse 9 says, Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him, they lack nothing. Again, this is not a contradiction. This is the sense of awe and wonder of God. And I would hope that even as our relationship with God deepens and goes farther, that we would never stop losing that, that sense of awe and wonder about how great and how powerful and how mighty God is. But as we love him and as we get to know him more, that relationship develops into a type of love. In fact, John says in chapter 4, verse 18, uh, 1 John 1, he says, There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. And I love what Isaiah says in his book in chapter 41, verse 10, where he says, So do not fear, for I am with you. That's, of course, God speaking. He says, Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Last Sunday, we sang the song, You Never Let Go. And part of the song has these lines, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Whom then shall I fear? Whom then 
shall I fear? And now I understand it's a rhetorical question, but the answer to that rhetorical question of whom then shall I fear is nobody, nothing. When God is for us, there's no one that can be against us. And so Christian brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you not to fear because God is on your side. Now the next two or three devotions I do are all going to kind of focus on this theme of being fearless. And so I pray that you'll continue to watch the daily devotions we post here on our line, uh, but also check the ones that I'm posting specifically concerning fear. And let us continue as we go through our life to bring glory to God and people to Jesus.